For as long as anyone can remember, the Seventh-day Adventist Church leaders have been saying over and over again that the Seventh-day Adventist Church is the remnant church. In fact, they have been saying this for so long that all the SDA people now echo their claims as if it's the truth, even though this is not what the Bible or Spirit of Prophecy says about the SDA church. Notice this. Revelation 12, 17 says, And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. As is very obvious here, the woman and the remnant of her seed are two separate groups of people. As students of prophecy understand, the woman in prophecy is the church, and the remnant of her seed are those called out of the church once it falls into apostasy. You simply cannot be the church and the remnant of the church's seed at the same time. You are either the church or the remnant of that church. You cannot be both, and you certainly can't change prophecy. I mean, common sense dictates that even the soul that doesn't understand prophetic utterance or even prophetic symbolism can see that the church and her remnant are two separate groups here. In fact, when you get time, check out this video I did years ago proving the Seventh-day Adventist Church can't possibly be the remnant church. As many of us that have been looking into the apostasy of the church know, the Seventh-day Adventist leaders have been completely infiltrated by Rome, right down to her joining hands with the second beast of Revelation in the Long Prophesied Church and State Contract, or 501c3 as most know it today. My last few videos confirmed that this church is no longer blessed of God, hands down. And that series of videos is not yet finished. It's not just their strange doctrines of Allah being God, or their claims that homosexuality is no longer sin, nor is it their Roman Catholic hierarchical structure, or even the tithe being sent to the Pope that exposes them. Nor is the claims of the General Conference that keeping Sunday holy is no big deal, or even the latest claim that there's no evidence of Sunday laws being discussed in the pipeline that expose them as being under Rome's thumb. It also has to do with rock-hard evidence that has been unearthed that they have been caught red-handed, changing all the Spirit of Prophecy books so as to not only hide their Vatican agenda, but they also hide specific prophetic utterances in Spirit of Prophecy so as to unready the people for what's actually coming. And for those that do not believe me, you can prove this quite easily if you're willing to do so. Get a great controversy book from the Seventh-day Adventist Church, and then get the original version of that very same book from vbates.com, where Vern Bates kept almost every one of Ellen White's original writings in a vault to assure they are kept safe from the plans of the wicked ones seeking to destroy them. And by the way, when Brother Vern reprinted those books, he photographed each page to assure no one could accuse him of altering those books in any way. That's why when you buy his books, you're going to find statements underlined in the books as well as some notes actually written in there from people that used the books over 100 years ago. When it comes to the unbiblical claim that the Seventh-day Adventist Church is the remnant church, the General Conference of the Seventh-day Adventist Church was caught changing the Spirit of Prophecy books in many ways, as well as echoing these changes from the pulpits of those working for Rome to make it appear the Seventh-day Adventist Church is the remnant church to those sitting in the pews that refuse to obey Jesus to come out of her before the plagues fall. But notice what was actually declared way back in 1870 before they were able to change those books. Notice what it says regarding the obedient church of the last days, the last generation, our day. Notice how the Seventh-day Adventist Church was not called the remnant church at all back then. It says this on page 11 of Spirit of Prophecy, volume 1. It says, The testimony of Jesus, said the angel to John, is the spirit of prophecy. And that's, of course, Revelation 19.10. It is the keeping of the commandments of God and the recognition of the revival of the spirit of prophecy by the remnant of the church or the Christians of the last generation. That stirs the ire of the dragon. That's why he's not making war with the woman anymore. He's making war with the remnant of her seed. To call the Seventh-day Adventist Church the remnant church is to declare the word of God and the spirit of prophecy to be in error and the lies of the apostate leaders in the SDA church to be truth. 
the obedient people of God that left the church because of the apostasy in the SDA church are called the remnant, not those still sitting in apostasy. Common sense, prophetic utterance, and even historic record confirms the obedient people of God that left the SDA church in today's last generation are not only doing the long prophesied work of proclaiming present truth, we are also warning as many as possible about how the SDA church has fallen to the point of embracing all that Rome has to offer, as well as rewriting spirit of prophecy in the same way Rome has been rewriting the Bible. If you open your eyes, you will see that the obedience of the true remnant people is what moved the Holy Spirit himself to guide them out of the fallen church. And in so doing, the Lord blessed them with his perfect zeal to go forth as a working church that spreads present truth to all those that have eyes that see. And when you compile the long prophesied fruits of his precious bride, along with the historic timing of this last generation that proved them being used of God to revive an interest in the spirit of prophecy, you cannot miss the fact that they are the true remnant of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, who, as was prophesied long ago, fell into the arms of Rome. Thank you for watching. God bless.